Welcome to the Center for Endovascular Surgery, a division of the Hyman Newman Institute for Neurology and Neurosurgery, or as it's often called, the Inn. We're located on Manhattan's Upper West Side at Roosevelt Hospital. The neighborhood is also home to Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts, as well as other New York landmarks such as Columbus Circle and Central Park. The Center for Endovascular Surgery is world renowned for its treatment of vascular disorders and malformations, specifically malformations of the blood vessels of the brain. In fact, many of the life-saving techniques now being used by hospitals around the world were first developed by the doctors here. But what makes the center and the end truly unique goes beyond the state-of-the-art technology and highly experienced staff. We look at the individual as a full person, a person with feelings, a person with fears, a person that needs support both in the medical aspect of it, but also in the spiritual aspect of it, in the fear that one has when one comes to a hospital. So the idea or the goal is to have a multidisciplinary team that brings beyond the science, brings the holistic part of medicine. It is this caring spirit, along with the extremely skilled medical team, that makes the indifference. Nice to see you. Good Same to see here. You. Come on in. In this video, you'll learn what to expect during your stay at the inn. But first, let's talk about your specific medical issue. Your diagnosis, or that of your child, is a problem called an arterial venous malformation, or AVM for short. In a healthy person, blood is carried from the heart through arteries. The blood is returned to the heart through veins. What's key here is the connection between the arteries and veins, the capillaries. These microscopic blood vessels act like a sort of speed bump. They slow down the blood flow so oxygen and nutrients can be delivered to body tissues and waste products removed. Capillaries also reduce the blood pressure to a level easily handled by the veins. An arterial venous malformation is a short circuit between the arteries, the blood vessels that carry the high pressure blood through very small, small blood vessels that become capillaries. That short circuit means high pressure blood from arteries in the brain is forcefully flowing directly into low pressure veins. As the blood goes so in such a high pressure, it may damage the veins, it may congest the veins. If too much pressure goes, then the heart has to pump harder. In newborn children, that can produce heart failure, and actually a child can die in the first days of life because of the heart not being able to compensate. They present with seizures, they may present, present with neurological deficit, may present with headaches, or yes, may present in certain percentage, 10% or so, with a hemorrhage in which there is an explosion, and that is also a potentially lethal disease. Brain AVMs are usually found when they begin to cause symptoms, sometimes later in childhood or more commonly in adults in their 20s and 30s. Occasionally, though, an AVM is found by accident when it hasn't yet caused a problem, such as when an MRI or a CT scan of the brain is done for other reasons. There's a variation or different type of AVM called a vein of Galen malformation, such as this newborn baby has. A vein of Galen malformation, generally speaking, is the most severe expression of the malformation disease. It happens in newborn babies. The shunt or short circuit is so severe that it tends to kill the baby in the first days of life. Or there's another group in which the manifestations occur within the first year of life, like the head expands, uh, like inability to grow, inability to develop, or they develop and they regress, and seldom do these children make it to the teenage years. And those few that may make it are seldom normal. So it's a lethal disease. The danger for a tiny baby like this is heart failure. The vein of Galen shunts so much blood the baby's heart strains to keep up, causing it to fail. Left untreated, these vein of Galen malformations are 98% fatal within the first year of life. Hello, 
maybe uh, uh, five days off with a uh, malformation of the brain. We're going to do Frank Joyce. Hi. Everyone agree? Sounds yes. good. Agree. Right. Treatment options for both AVMs and vein of Galen malformations can be similar. They range from the conservative, watching and monitoring the malformation, to more aggressive interventions. Some vascular malformations can be shrunk with radiation therapy, but more often, AVMs will need to be treated using endovascular surgery, meaning from inside the blood vessel. The most common of these methods is a minimally invasive procedure called embolization. With the help of high-resolution images of the blood vessels on a bank of monitors, the doctor threads a long, thin catheter through an artery, usually in the groin. The catheter is gently guided up to the brain, to the precise location of the AVM. Then your doctor will either inject or place something in the blood vessel to block it off. That's the embolization. This can be a liquid, such as a medical-grade glue, or tiny particles, or even tiny balloons or metal coils. The idea is to slow or completely stop the blood flowing through the abnormal tangle of blood vessels. This will help keep the AVM from rupturing or bleeding. Embolization may need to be done in several stages to allow the brain to adapt bit by bit to its new blood flow pattern. Sometimes embolization is done in conjunction with either traditional surgery or radiation to achieve the best possible result. What's important to remember is that every AVM is different. The treatment of arterial venous malformation is tailored to the specific individual depending on many factors, from the age of the patient, the presentation of the clinical problem, the ease or difficulty in treating the malformation, uh, all those will play a role in how to treat. Now that we've explained your condition and the different treatment options, let's talk about what to expect when you come in for treatment. The entrance to Roosevelt Hospital is on 10th Avenue between West 58th and 59th Streets. After entering the building, come directly to the fourth floor and follow the signs to Suite 4G. Hi, welcome back. A team of staff members will be on hand to help with the admission process. How is everybody today? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Everything is done right here. So the same folks you meet in the morning, the nurses and physicians, will be with you throughout the entire process. First, it establishes a rapport and a relationship, and most importantly, it really gives trust. Trust amongst the family, the patient, and the caregivers that are caring for your child or yourself that day. How's Sophia? How are you? It's a big day. Yes. On the day of your procedure, you'll be taken to a holding area where you will be prepped for treatment. A registered professional nurse will perform a patient assessment which may include taking your temperature, blood pressure, additional vital signs, and blood tests. You'll also receive a vital patient information folder and be asked to sign consent forms by your doctor. The mask, and that's what puts her to sleep, right? She'll breathe in the gas. Yeah, and it takes about 10, 15 seconds. Another very important person you'll speak with is the anesthesiologist. These doctors are experienced in what it takes to put you or your child to sleep safely and to assist your treating physician during the procedure. This skill and knowledge is especially important when the patient is a child. We recognize that children are not simply small adults. When they come in, they're afraid, they're confused. It might be a very new environment for them, or they might be returning and actually have some memory of that they were here before. So we treat them differently, and every kid is special. We know when the children come in based upon their age, what needs they really have. So if I have a young child who might be toddler age, um, crayons, coloring books are available. We even have a wagon that we can bring them into the operative suite with so they can actually have a ride. When it's time for the procedure, you'll be taken to the catheterization suite. There, you will lie on the treatment table that incorporates high-resolution 3D x-ray and fluoroscopy systems that will guide your doctors during treatment. 
Parents may stay with their child until they are safely asleep. This state-of-the-art complex has a control room where all aspects of your case are continually and carefully monitored. After the treatment is over, adults go to our ICU for recovery. We have a special recovery area for kids called the PICU. That stands for Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. The PICU and Adult ICU are specifically designed to care for patients who have undergone endovascular procedures. Both are staffed by highly trained professionals. At the PICU, in addition to a full-time child life specialist, we also have a professional clown to help bring a smile to our young patients and their parents. Some of our best therapists have four legs. Pet therapy is increasingly recognized to be beneficial for patients of all ages. These are just a few examples of how the inn strives to make your child's hospital experience as pleasant and non-traumatic as possible. Um, parents can stay with their children here, one parent in the ICU overnight. We do have some lazy boy recliners, so they're more than welcome to sleep in as well with their child and be part of the whole process. All of the staff at the center hopes that this video has helped you understand your condition and what to expect during your stay. But you certainly have more questions. The doctors, nurses, and staff are here to answer them. Your physicians will gladly explain anything you don't understand. Everybody's here because we want to be. Um, this is a place where we really feel we can give quality, compassionate care that's given no other place in the world. Rebecca and Richard Smith turned to the inn when they learned their still unborn daughter was in distress. We were the happiest people. We were getting ready for her baby shower. And then we go for the routine exam. Uh, they're looking at the baby. We're measuring the baby. Everything is happy. And then, boom, you know, uh, they don't know what the baby has. The baby has something in her head. We're not sure what it is. So we went online and looked up Vena Gallen. And Dr. Berenstein was the only doctor that was listed everywhere. I mean, he was all over the internet, and I read support groups, and everybody said Dr. Berenstein saved my baby's life. We actually called here, and he came home for vacation and called us immediately. They treated us here like gold. The staff at the center will be happy to put you in touch with families who have been through a similar experience. Or you may want to find out about our support groups that can help you through this difficult time. You know, we get uh, all types of emergencies, uh, and we have to be available. Part of the principle of this institute is that everybody receives care, no matter your ability to pay, no matter your ability uh, to come. We don't, I don't ask about insurance, I don't ask about those things. We take the patient and we deal with the logistics later on. Well, I would shout from the rooftop, rooftops how, how wonderful they are. Yeah, I would definitely say this has been the best experience. They know what they're doing and they're professionals. Every case we treat is different, and the outcome in each case may also vary. We encourage you to discuss your particular case with our healthcare team, which will review in detail risks, benefits, and alternatives.